Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Hearts of Iron for the New Order as Cheetah, well, Far Eastern Imperial realm, realm, rather, where we left off, we united everything and we're slowly trying to fix everything. And we're about to whoop Boris Shepanov into, uh, into shape. Boris Shepanov was not pleased. It had been several months since his armies had achieved victory over the Empire's foes, and yet, despite his best efforts, the lingering remnants of his past enemies continued to find ways to become a thorn in his side. Today, he had called a meeting with the rest of the White Army's general to make his expression known. Gentlemen, please explain to me how, after supposedly destroying our enemies, they are still there out there killing our troops and giving me a headache in the process. Uh, I can assure you, sir, that while these insurgent acts are not dealing in pain, they are nothing more nothing to be worried about. I pray that they are too insignificant to persist for too much longer and they will fall apart on their own given enough time. Pardon me, Leonid, but that's bullshit and you know it. They're out there right now killing our men and trying to undo all the hard work that we've accomplished. And you're going to sit here and tell me it's under control? Do you even have a clue what's going on? It seems that you fools had the authority to claim victory without finishing the war and that ends the day. I want all of you to send your best men out there to start making arrests. Alright. Reduce the administrative strain. Yeah. Faith in Mikhail. That is what I'll go for. Mmm. Sure. And repay it all. There you go. Good. Our Tsar has been depressed and despondent, doing his duty only because of veiled threats and no other choice. His speeches, only barely intelligible, have long been a sore spot between the Tsar and the military. However, Mikhail has surprisingly expressed a degree of interest in his duties. With a renewed sense of vigor, he goes about learning Russian uh, and involving himself in any way he can. It seems that our prayers have been answered. While some word this might lead to a more independent mind at Mikhail, at the end of the day, the military is still in charge. They just won't give up. Kruger's eyes dart at one end of the alley to the other. He tried his best uh, to look as though he was in control, but in reality he was terrified. Gone were the days uh, where he and the rest of his men in Russian fascist party could act with impunity. His two friends, however, did not seem to share the same fear. Where's your Tsar now, Jew? You thought you could come through our part of town? We still run things around here. And there's no war, uh, and no war's going to change that. I just collect the census, the man cried. I'm not even Jewish. His pleas for clemency were met with ferocious barrage of kicks. A shout rang out from behind Groger, drawing his attention against all, all three of the fascists. A pair of white army soldiers were approaching, weapons at the ready. The sight caused Gregor Stormix to turn. Step away from him, uh, the lead one called, and put your hands in the air now. Ah, the dogs of the tower are finally here, barked one of the, the Gregor's companions. We're just having a chat with one of your people. Uh huh. Hey, wait, we wouldn't. Uh, he thought and speech were in prep as one of his friends drew their weapons. Didn't even have time to call out before the soldiers fired. As the bullets tore through him and he fell to the ground, his face next to the man uh, his group had been terrorizing. Their war is over. Alright. Slowly cleaning up the street, huh? That's good. What's the influence right now? Between the two factions. Average and loyalist is very low. Good. Mm -hmm. Pull back the curtain. All right. We're gonna get through there slowly but surely. Public visits. Let's see. With the Tsar's renewed interest in statesmanship, he has humbly and formally requested of Boris Shep uh, Shepanov to begin receiving guests in his quarters and make public appearances to various places within the Empire to be, to make himself known to the public, the elites, and public, the people, the public, and the, the people, the elites, and the public alike. After much deliberation of Rotkins, and with no short amount of convincing from Ivan Mikhailov, Shepanov uh, has agreed to allow this request from the monarch. His first audience was with Mikhailov himself, adding to Shepanov's reluctance, though Mikhail's intent to visit and expect the Imperial Garden Shita seemed to placate him. With ease, public visits, and uh, private audience, the Tsar will make himself known to both people and those within the civilian uh, positions of power as a present and willing monarch. There we go. I'm making of play. Ooh.
It is time for a final confrontation between the military and Mikhailov. Ooh, interesting. What's my construction like? Well, there's some. There's not much, but some still. There's a 90, 80, 80. And another 80. Ironically, it's better to do it like this. Um, no, no. There we go. It's very low right now, but we're going to be increasing it. This will decrease mil military influence. Good. Still average. But in time, both Mikhailov, uh, Mikhail and Mikhailov uh, had become aware of the Vol Volkogonov, an influential figure within the Imperial Army and an, uh, an old rival of Shepunov, who had signaled to Mikhailov's contacts within loyalists that he may be willing to help Mikhailov's plight against Shepunov and his military hold on the administration. While it may not be easy to win over Vol Volkogonov, his assistance in the upcoming struggle against the uh, interim prime minister and his iron grip over the Tsardom would be essential in ensuring that Shepunov and his cronies uh, would not silence the Tsar forever. Remember, my Tsar, all warfare is based on deception. Even the wars which are not fought on battlefields but inside plague palace chambers and within parliaments. Good. We will increase all of our influence. <laughs> and we need so much points. So many points need to be added. How's this looking? Oh, it's almost ready to get secondary education, probably, right? Or like, no, primary schooling, rather. Alright. Nothing in here that we can take just yet. Pull back the curtain. Mikhail have com ha has come to the Tsar. Mikhailov has come to the Tsar with what seems to be a, a completely ridiculous proposal to pull back the curtain on uh, Shepanov's puppet show on in a public place to showcase the true extent of Shepanov's influence, both in public and the offices. At the public event in Chita, the Tsar would make overtures and actions that Shepanov. Uh, would simply be unable to abide by. This, of course, in, is incredibly dangerous, even if it was successful. It would draw... Oh, this could go seriously wrong. Oh, no, never mind. I'm gonna cancel it. I'm gonna start dealing with all of this first. There we go. We got low influence. Oh, good. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. Create an intelligence comp. Ooh, good. We'll reduce the uh, administ administrative strain as well. Good. And wherever possible, I'll continue on with the with these ones. I think a resource gain efficiency is probably the best one out of all of them. Uh, right. Let's get some more resource gain efficiency, right? The warehouse was filled with buzzing tensions that have always felt uh, the prospects of a white crackdown was never far from the minds of those who assembled. And each and every member of the underground had sworn both oaths both to one another and to the absolute secrecy. How then did the Akran Akhrana... Uh, know exactly where to find them. The door flew off the hinges as the Tsar's death squad stormed inside. The Sablonites scrambling for their weapons, Vasily, Katya and Boris uh, died in the first few seconds. Soft lungs, hearts and uh, hard heads blooming like uh, dripping roses in answer to the Tsar's bullet. An errant round tore through the portrait of Sablin that stood at the end of the table. The shattering of the glass unheard and the rattling and the rattle of gunfire. The Leninists fought back firing wildly with the pistols and cheap SMGs, crouching behind overturned tables. Others attempted to flee, the last thing they saw before running into the snow were the hollow and betrayed faces of their comrades, who loved them above all else. The operation was a tremendous success. Every communist bandit was accounted for, either dead or in uh, the tender clutches of the Akhrana. Blood uh, drip dripped down on the final portrait. If anyone had bothered to look, they might have thought uh, Sablin was weeping blood. 
All right, kind of ominous, but oh well. Hmm. New white army. Interesting. There we go. People might trade it away from us. Granting us more factories, so... That's one way of doing it. Oh, the liberals have unified Kazakhstan, though. Interesting. So, the same individuals who proposed the splitting up of our territory into autonomous um, provinces have also come to propose the so-called Imperial Governing Committee, which would have the ultimate oversight over these uh, provinces. Uh, the IGC is, as they said, a no-brainer. However, there have been some debates over how exactly to implement this committee. Alright, some decisions will have to be formed, huh? Alright. Hmm. Oh, we also have an operative. Let's get uh, some knowledge up in there, maybe. Weekly manpower? Consumer goods, nah. Nah. Alright, so here it is. The Industrialist Pact Committee. Yeah, yeah, definitely this one, because it's gonna increase our influence, or rather decrease, decrease the military ones. It's both low, good. Good. Infrastructure, no. Ugh. Nothing too worthwhile down there. Hmm, what do we need? Can we increase poverty? Well, not increase, like, decrease poverty, rather. No. Agriculture, industrial equipment. Economic base, research. No. No, there's nothing in here. Because poverty is a big problem right now. I guess we'll wait for now. Hmm. Come on, my dude. Handing out grants. Yeah, of course. There we go. Keep it up. We keep lowering their influence. So that's good. Hmm. So it all increase my yeah. All of it will increase my influence. Which is good for me. Not so good for them. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Our influence is average at this point. This is going to help out as well. And then we'll pull back the curtain. Without sufficient civilians. We have, we have, average should be enough, right? Especially with the decision that will happen once I take... Uh, Is there no decision? There should be, right? Right? Oh no, that was just that. That's it. All right. Well, off it goes. Well, I can, you know what? No, I'll, I'll wait for now. Expand this one right here. Before we continue, and I would like to just a bit more time. To, um, oh, they got low influence. Never mind. At this point, they have low influence. So after this one, I'm going to go for pull back the curtain. There we go. Good. I'll, I'll just take it. This is all useless to me, to be honest, but it just increases my influence. That's all that matters right now. Uh, what do we need? Some resource extraction, maybe? Sure. Why not? Let's continue going down this path. All right. Without sufficient civilian support, this plot would backfire intensely. However, he has ultimately decided that it would be worth it. I do have a decent chunk of civilian support, though. It's more than the military support right now. So it should be good. Right? Right? Doesn't seem to have backfired, but I'm guessing an event has to fire. By now, both Mikhail and Boris Shepnov have realized that they're plotting against one another. The unpleasant realization comes with a timer. Both men have begun to finalize that they, they uh, what they can uh, and when over all the assistance they can muster. As the stormy cloud of conflict descends upon a once quiet Chita, both the Tsar and the Prime Minister have begun mobilizing their forces against one another. In what seems to be a conflict akin to the drama that played out in uh, October 1917, the Cornell of Affair. Despite uh, neither side being consciously aware of it, the confrontation will decide the future of the white movement in the Far East. Making a play. Oh boy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the winner in here. What do we need? Poverty, army professionalism, or academics? Let's go for academics, maybe. There we go. And pay this off as well. Good. Our influence is average, but it's good enough. So, when the time comes, will you support us? Of course, my Tsar. With my body and my, with my blood. Remember, Ivan, you owe me one. Of course, uh, Prime Minister Shepanov, I will be there when you need me. Uh, both the Tsar's loyalists and the military have begun making plays against one another in preparation of the inevitable confrontation that neither side will know. Uh, where or when it will happen. The only thing uh, either side is sure is that when it does happen, they'll be ready. Good. This will be the end of them. There we go. Shoring up support. Let's see what's up. With the upcoming confrontation seemingly inevitable, both sides are scrambling to shore up their support bases, ensuring the loyalty of their allies and trying 
to, desperately to get anyone who could be willing to help them on their side. As the clock ticks closer to midnight, both the Tsars and the military loyalists are able to take action um, will, and this is what an opportunity for both sides to shore up their final opportunities. Have you been able to uh, get in contact with our beneficiary? Yes, my Tsar. He says that it won't be cheap, but he can get it done. Uh, our ally Yehetnov uh, has mentioned that he's able to get the job done. Excellent, thank you. Good. The final preparation. Uh, trouble is brewing in the government. The tensions between the civilian and military sectors are rapidly approaching climax. Despite the appearances, the dominance of the White Army in the affairs of state is not clearly as strong as it once was. Ever since the death of the Adam and Chemnov, the military influence has grown more tenuous by the day. Opportunistic statesmen circles like vultures to rally around uh, Tsar Mikhail, the one man they believe can spare their inten uh, intentions of breaking the tight stranglehold the White Army has over the state. With the support of the clique of young officers and the backing of the uh, of Ivan Mikhailov, uh, Mikhail conspires to seize control over the government and reaffirm his position as the absolute author authority of the Russian state in both name and intent. The White Army and their chief, on the other hand, are aware that something is amiss. Uh, while they still do not have conclusive evidence that the Tsars can conspire against them, they are at the very least suspicious enough to prepare for a preemptive action against potential dissentants. No. You will get no influence. A very low influence, and ours is average, in fact. Prime Minister, we've been able to contact a villain. He's confirmed that he's ready to fight when you need him to. My Tsar, Commander Ternigov, um has referred to his loyalty to, us, to the cause. When the time comes, he will be uh, with us. The end draws near. The Prime Minister has secured his power base and has prepared for his march upon the Imperial Palace. Meanwhile, the Tsar waits with bated breath to see if his support will ever come. The future of not only the Principality, but all of Russia hangs in balance. Interesting. Very interesting. Industrial equipment, do we care about that? It's improving. You know what? It can stand to improve some more, sure. There you go. We will have to pay it off though. There you go. I've almost got a billion in reserve as well. We do some good shit right here, as you can see. Oh, our poverty rate, yes. There we go. Oh, we need to do all of them first. Damn, alright. Let's get to it then. Thought we had a... Alright, I guess so. I guess we'll do all of that then. Should be fine enough in and of its own. Siberia. Kirill grunted as he said that. Mm. Oh yeah, poor Kirill. He was once the son of the Siberian wilderness and her natural boundaries, now doing his bidding, the bidding of the very man he once tried to resist. Although the pay was very good, Kirill still wondered if it was worth selling his soul and helping them destroy the force similar to the ones he once called home. As Kirill um, lit a cigarette, his mind uh, one, uh, continued to wander. Siberia was a vast land, but even a seemingly endless force of a land like this, we're fine in the grand scheme of things. The Imperial Development Company thro tore through uh, the wilderness like a pack of wolves. The price of progress indeed. Transforming the wastes. There we go. We're just improving it all. Are there any more loyalist decisions? Disable them.
No, there's there's shit as well. There ain't sh any good shit in there. There we go. Let's buy it, buy it off as well. Good. We need to fix this poverty as well. If at all possible. Hmm. All right. The riches of the Far East. Let's get that going as well. Culture. I wouldn't mind improving agriculture or army. Prof there we go. Some army professionalism. Boom. Oh, it's not good. It's not good right the right this second, but we'll improve it. Actually, how about this? Primary schooling will go away. Elite and only in education. Hopefully, we'll fix that as well. Within our focus. Wait, explaining the prisoners. What what bonus does it give me specifically? Uh, penal labor, which grants recruitable population stability, uh, less research time, but free repairs. All right, interesting. It's Boris that proposed this, so I, I don't know about taking it, but whatever. That's yeah, fine enough in and of its own. I shall tolerate it. <laughs> Moment of respite. Working with the dead man walking or working with the fascists like you, Anatoly. The fascist man gave an empty laugh. It doesn't matter who we were. Bolshevik, all they see are our bodies for the mines. We're all brothers down here, whether we like it or not. With that, Anatoly made his way down. Deep down, Semyon knew that he spoke the truth. Part of him hoped that his former enemy would come back out of that pit of life. Uh, probably not. Let's be real. People in the in this day and age aren't particularly known for their um, mercy. I will take that because that gives me actually resources. Oh, there's still 19 million to uh, yeah to pay back, but by the end of the month or something, I'm sure we'll be able to. Oh, that one's already doing its thing. Get this one going, eh? Propaganda machine. Does not sound interesting to me at all. Hmm. Increase Japanese support. Well, let's start with our GB GDP increase and GDP growth in general. So agriculture, slowly increasing. So poverty and army professionalism, if there's anyone. No. So let's, let's get our agriculture done in the meantime. Because everything needs to improve in the end, right? Might as well get to it. <laughs> Actually, I think Kloskemansch's Reich does not have yeah all of this back just yet. If Ukraine though, but that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, they're declaring war on everyone now. Never mind. Just as I was saying it, they've declared war on pretty much everything in there. Factory output, let's get that going. Good. Getting a lot of points now, so I'm happy with that. Slowly but surely we're getting the points in. That's in the scientific method. And this will be the last one. That can improve something for us. 6.9, nice. 12% still. Jesus Christ. I got paid off half. <laughs> Can redirect the workers. Oh, our poverty rate will uh, improve. Good. That's actually exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> Let's get the Japanese investments. All right. I can't marry anyone in, huh? Military Gil Moscovin? Damn. Oh, look, that's looking kind of thick. Wait, oh, you're going after Kazakhstan somehow? No, you're not. It, look, it looked like you were. I was wondering how many times you can go through that. That was ridiculous. Damn. That's also a uh, pretty interesting focus tree. There's a lot of interesting focuses in, in, uh, to be had in here. There we go. Some more of that. One side relation. This is uh, the Imperial Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nikolai uh, Uchtomsky. I'm afraid there's some news where you're not going to like the familiar voice made to Prime Minister, uh, Foreign Minister Gokult, my partners are receptive to your offer of an economic partnership, however they demand certain concessions. What, we've given you quite uh, enough already. I suggest you alter your tone. Uh, my partner wants to ensure that the Zaibatsu can conduct their business as they see fit within your boards. I trust that is not too much to ask. We will be more than happy to accept their business, but you know the Zaibatsu would have uh, us by the balls in no time if we were to give them a chance. Forgive me. But I don't believe you're in a position to bargain. You are either accept the benefits our business has to offer or don't. For record, I would argue that the conversation would not be necessary if we were dealing with your uh, predecessors instead. The man was right. Damn it. Uh, you'll have your concession. Just no more surprise, alright? We will be in touch. Deal gets worse by the minute. Hmm. No, we'll, f we'll finish up this tree first, right? That sounds a lot better. We're paying off our, uh, our debt right now. Oh, look at that. Everything is slowly going up. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely indeed. Uh, but that is pretty much all the time I have left for the day. I do hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hopefully I'll see you next time. And uh, hopefully you have a nice day. Bye-bye.